sound from the computer, so I decided not to do this mic. It's a clip on mic. Let me try again. I, I have yet to... Video, but you can't hear the sound, even though she tried to include the, include oh. the computer sound. Would there be a device setting? Have I stopped have sharing? I think, yes, I think I have not stopped sharing. Yeah. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. I have not stopped sharing. <laughs> No, I yeah. think you've stopped sharing. Stop you, might, sharing. you might want to try resharing yeah. again and see if it works. Once a while, there's a problem sharing the video. Uh, yeah, audio. The, audio. Oh, the video doesn't. Hi everybody, welcome to the first episode of Siancito Sarawa! We're gonna explore Sarawa from Kuching to Cebu to Mulu to Miri But today, Napi, what is up? Kita pergi semadang loh Okay Can you hear the video? Yeah, we can now. Can already, yeah. Okay. Why turn? Why turn? Hot. Hot. Best. Best. From her. From her. From her. Okay, can I, can I start now? Hold on a second, just a, yeah, okay, just give me a second, okay? Oh. All right, everybody, um, okay, uh, Esther, you ready? Okay. Okay, Jenny, ready? Okay, um, I'll, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the afternoon session of day two of the Borneo Education Research Conference. Our first presenter this afternoon is Madam Chuk Virgin. And the title of her presentation is Localizing Full Blast Plus Four Among Secondary School Students in Bao District. So first of all, Madam Chuk is going to briefly introduce her original idea, summarize her contribution to knowledge, and then demonstrate her teaching method in a 30-minute mock lesson. Madam Chuk, would you like me to remind you of the time? Yeah, sure. Please. Okay. So... I will remind you at 25 minutes when you're uh, 25 minutes up with your mock lesson. And if you do reach 30 minutes and you have not yet wrapped up, then I'm going to call time and ask you to wrap up within one minute. Okay? Yeah, sure. Um, the audience may ask questions at the Q&A session after the mock lesson. Um, at present, we do not have any live audience. But later on, we may get some online. We have one online here. Um, and also the reviewers will ask questions as well. Okay, so um, I'll just start my timer. And um, you can start when you're ready. Sure.
Okay, good afternoon to everyone. So I have shortened my uh, title to a Glocker Classroom. This is uh, from the original title you have seen, uh, Glocalizing Full Plus Plus Four among the students in Bao District. So I bring my greetings to you from school, SMK Lake, Bao Sarawak. All right, there's a problem arising ever since the adoption of CFR syllables, CFR aligned syllables, uh, about like 11 years ago. So with regards to this, I will need to highlight um, the M of the MEB, Malaysian Education Blueprint, aims to develop a global citizen with a strong sense of Malaysian identity, who is ready and willing to contribute to the harmony and the betterment of the country and community. In about 11 years ago, when the reformation of education started, that was also the time when the CAFR, the KSSR and the KSSM were introduced. In the meantime, we were given a globalized textbook. This globalized textbook, I, I, I was referring to the form four the, with the name uh, Full Blast Plus Four. So we were given this textbook without first analyzing it from the local perspective. And then we, we, we were given different book every year as students progress to higher form. So there is a missing link here. If, we, if the, the aim of the MEB is to produce a global citizen, but we are missing a local context here. However, it, it was stated in the standard-based English language curriculum, it says that this, the student's aspiration, can be achieved by making use of real-life issues, which are meaningful and hands-on in nature for the classroom activity. And students are able to apply knowledge and skills to the real-world setting, which could lead to the greater success in the career and workplace. Therefore, ever since the teachers uh, were given this textbook, we have encountered substantial gaps in trying to bring out the best outcome that can achieve this purpose. According to Akbari, Akbari 2008, he says that if life trans transformation is the key, then due attention should be uh, requ should required to pay to a, a learner's own culture. So with this, I come up with a, um, like a lesson series in a form of project-based learning. Then I bring my students to I bring my students to be rooted in our local context and to in eventually grow globally. So by participating in this project, my student will be able to collaborate with the global classroom in issues of trash management, which is one of the topic uh, in the the textbook on the environment. Uh, and such to de to develop essential skill and literacy in the language, in the English language setting. The essential skills are referred to the four language skill as well as the 21st century skill. And finally, to increase the sense of pride and national identity as my student engage to solve a real life, a real life problem relevant to them. And all this were not found specifically in the textbook. This was what I meant by the substantial gap that the teachers I have encountered in trying to bring up what is hands-on and relevant to the students. My students has faced a lot of problem in trying to understand the foreign culture, um, the idolized American culture or Western culture, where they could hardly relate to. So in my lesson series, there are seven lessons. So each caters to different needs and the skills uh, in case you have not heard or heard of this word, this glocalization exists in about two decades ago. Initially, this term was to use was used to describe a product or a service that is developed and distributed globally, but is also adjusted and accommodated accommodated to the user or the consumer in a local in a local market. Um, okay, so so maybe um. You have have you like tried the nasi lemak at the McDonald's? A lot, uh, at one time, uh, this McDonald's has introduced this nasi lemak. Um, so how do you like this kind of local taste in a international brunch? So that is exactly what I mean. In the classroom, I also 
uh, I know, uh, I'm trying to propose this kind of ideas to my student. OK, so lesson one is all fun, all natural. This caters to the speaking. Lesson two, beach bodyguard. This caters to the listening and trash, man uh, trash thing uh, thingy to the reading. My paw is here is on the writing. And another last three were the forum in Fleet Greek cultural box exchange and finally the global classroom. So you could see there are four skills of language skill and three essential skills of the 21st century. So I have um, finished with my introduction of an idea and a concept. So now I would like to go to the, 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 the delivery of the lesson. OK. So hi student, welcome to the very exciting lesson series you have never ever experienced before. So first thing first, let's begin with lesson one. How many of you would like fun? Yes, what I mean here is serious fun. So fun is more important, right? So here you will watch a video and I'd like you to describe the beauty of Sarawak landscape as you watch and discuss ways to promote an activity near your location. This video is about like three minutes, but I will show you only like a minute or so. Huh? Sorry, you're so sorry. You're so sorry. You're so sorry. 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 Your slides not, not moving. Oh, really? It's not moving. Okay. 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 Let me exit. Because I think I think I have I have moved to the presenter mode. mode. Hmm. OK, I think I just moved to the content only. What about now? Uh, you're not sharing the screen now. OK, okay. you see that? Oh, it's not moving just now. Yeah. Can you see that now? Yes. All right. I shouldn't put in the presenter mode. He was at the presenter mode just now. Wait, now it's a white screen. Now, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, because I added the page. So there are seven series. So these are the products. Uh, I think I have uh, I have a, um, brought you through this lesson one. They are lesson one or to lesson seven. So four language skill and three. Uh, the 21st century essential skill. So this is that. OK. One student, are you ready to have some fun? OK, hey, student, that's it. That's all about Kaya. So now I would like you to discuss ways that you can promote this activity near your location. So I'll get students to discuss as this is part of the speaking test in the CEFR exam. So students will discuss ways. So next, as to get students to do listening, this is on Beach uh, Bodyguard. A sharing session was arranged with a voluntary organization. So students will get to listen to the sharing and answer five questions. And they will try to uh, attempt the quiz through this link, quizy link. So let me show you the sharing, the recorded uh, sharing session. My student has gone through this on the Sarawak day, 22nd July.
Is there supposed to be audio, Madam Cho? Sorry? Is there supposed to be audio for this visual? Yes, 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 yes. It's um, audio. So we can't hear any audio here. Oh, again? Yeah, unfortunately. I think I will. Wait. What about now? Um, no. you're not sharing your, now you're not sharing your screen, so you can't see it. What about now? Uh, nope, you're not sharing your screen. Wait, wait, can you wait? Um, the sound is crucial for your lesson, is it, Ms. Madam Cho? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the sound is crucial. As this is a sharing, student will pick up or I didn't know or uh, identify the content and to answer the quiz. But I would just I would not show the, the whole recorded series. OK, maybe maybe while you are showing us the recordings, you can actually um, summarize what's being said so we can hear you tell us what what is being said sort of uh, while we watch the video. OK, so if I show the video, could you hear me talking? I don't know. We have to give it a try. OK, let's try. Yeah, let's try that. OK, can you hear me now? Yes, but we can't see anything yet. We, we can't, can't hear me. You can't hear from, me. hear from me. No, we can hear you, but we cannot see the video. Oh, OK. okay. I think I know, I know what. I will just skip the video because those videos were they were just the example, but I have the content here. OK, so from that video, I believe you have heard what's the purpose and the aims of the organization. So please answer that in the quiz and also choose the activity that has been carried out by Kuching Beach Cleaners. And I would like you to also identify the committee of the members and who is the founder. And you'll be surprised to see that the founders are actually near your age. And how do they carry out the activities? You will also be getting it from the sharing. And I would like you to arrange the sequence because if one of the sequence is wrong, you might not get to do what you want to do from the local authority. And finally, in the sharing, you will also be hearing the challenges, the very real challenges they face and the hard truth. So with all this, it will take around 30 minutes for the uh, recorded session. So um, to answer the quiz, there are only five questions. OK, so that that's wraps up uh, lesson uh, lesson two and we have moved, we will the following day, I will bring students to lesson three because in lesson three, they will get into a more research on trash. So with this, students get to scheme and scan website for general and specific information and also to gather information uh, and organize them into four parts. So this is taken from the official training website. Can I get students to read this? That student will skim and scan the text. There are four paragraphs. And the task for them is to organize the four what into this chart. What's the core component of Kuching Integrated Waste Management System? And what's the purpose of Kuching Integrated Waste Management Park? Um, Madam, As the, Madam yes. Um, yes. Are you, are you sharing your slides? Yeah, I'm sharing. Oh, you still can't see. Yeah, we oh. have slides. Oh dear. What about now? Um, nope, we can't see your slides. Hmm. 
Um, you can't see now? Oh, that made me very nervous. Uh, can don't you worry. see now? No, you can't see it. Why it kept disappearing? Mm. Now? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay. All right. So, okay. in the lesson three, student will get into reading to skim and scan the text. So, this is the text originally from Trinicon official website. So, after they have skimmed and scanned and processed the information, they will need to organize it into the four what. What's the core component of coaching integrated waste management system and the purpose of this? And what's the equipment used? What's the basis of the operation in the coaching waste management uh, plant? Okay, so student go through that. The next day, or however, my whole series takes up about four months. Okay, in my lesson four, this is where to get into writing. My poll is here. My students, they have paid up with... Uh, okay, I'm um, student, you will pay up with a South Korean student through your Instagram. So I believe you have received response from your friends. So how do you like this connection, a new friend? So right now, I would like you to write a, a short mail. You can introduce your family, your school, and I would like you to highlight the culture that is unique to you and write it down. And you can decorate, decorate it if you have the talent. And don't forget, buy, if you could, or DIY some uh, souvenir or a token to be sent together to South Korea. When everybody is ready, I will collect them from you and to Korea it. So that is on lesson four. So this is this is sample from my students. And this is also one of my students participant. So the next day after all this is done. Student gather the information from Siasito Sarawak, from beach cleaning, as well as trash management from uh, the training can. Uh, official website, they will put all this into a video and to present it in Flipgrid, record a video and post it in Flipgrid. In Flipgrid, uh, students from South Korea and also other school, they, um, they will give response and also to give leave feedback to the video that the students have uh, recorded. So this in Flipgrid, students will uh, exchange ideas and uh, discuss issues so I believe I, I think one of the highlights I like to bring up here is as the uh, as my student uh, joined the sharing session by coaching beach cleaner, my student cannot physically join them due to uh, due to this um, SOP. So. so they found out some plastic bottles from Japan and South Korea were found along the beach of Kuching. So this isn't just a nation issue, but it's a global issue as the sea circulate. The sea currents circulate. Part of the rubbish from the sea are being washed ashore. So that's how we get it from, you know, from along our beaches. So our students in bringing up this um, issue to the South Korean, I see that the students have demonstrated a very responsible uh, attitude in decision making because this might cause, uh, how to say that, conflict of interest maybe. Or, or um, some uh, some unhappy feeling, but my, my students they were able to handle it, I think wisely. Or after after the forum, there's a time for us to to exchange the cultural box. So in this cultural box, the students have already written the email right and the, the the letter right, and. And uh, they send a souvenir exchange. So this is um, like a mini ceremony to unbox the cultural box. Um, and in getting this cultural box possible, we have received like collaboration from the PTA of our school and uh, sponsorship from South Biodiversity Center and Yen Yen Enterprise in making of the Batek mask. They help to top up our parcel so that we could courier the right thing over to our friend. So meet the team. These are the 
are the two teams who have participated in the cultural box and also the forum, the free grid in forum. Okay. Good day, everyone. My name is Christina Arabella, a 16 years old. Can you hear the sound of my test the testimony? Yes. 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 You can hear the sound this time. Okay. Student from Baut Lake High School, Malaysia. So today I am very excited to share you the things that I have learned in this international collaboration program with South Korean students. Firstly, I learned to appreciate my own culture and the environment that I live in. Since this program is about exchanging topics on the environment, such as the garbage issues, I learned to understand the real life problem that is very relevant to me for years to come because we all make rubbish every day, right? So I begin to direct my perspective to my surroundings in the meantime to make a betterment to the community, nation, and become a responsible global citizen. Secondly, I also learned to respect the diversity of people and culture. Since this program involves two sides, which are the Malaysian and the Korean students, we get to talk a lot about each other's cultures, such as the foods and the people. Also, we don't forget to exchange stories, such as our hobbies or how's the school like there. Last but not least, I learned to continually striving to show love and respect to the Mother Earth. Based on the presentation from both countries, we already introduced the solutions or ways to reduce this garbage issues problem. I get a lot of new information and not gonna lie, it really motivates me to make the Mother Earth a better place. That's all from me, thank you. Good day, everyone, my name is Chris. Okay, um, that's about the testimony. And um, finally, in, les in lesson seven, this is yet to come, but it's coming soon on the 23rd of December. And this shall be the highlight of this entire package or of, the, of my uh, project best learning. On the 23rd of December, all participants from the six country, uh, they will join an online conference via Gather Town Conference. We call this Gather Town, Gather Town Conference. So the videos of students' work will be exhibited here. So participants can visit the booth and leave feedbacks. So I can't move these slides, but the idea is like this. Students can transform themselves into avatar and name them the, name themselves. This is like in the, in the, in the conference room. So as I, as I move the slide over to the booth, so these are the booth from the different country. So they will exhibit the video and the work here and students shall have a gallery work. So in the gallery work, students can just uh, leave it back. There are live conference and also offline conference. Offline means after 23rd of December, uh, students can, uh, can, can visit this site freely. Oh, can you hear this? This is, this is actually uh, Mr. Kyung Kok Ko from South Korea. We are in very close partnership with him ever since last year. I would really like you to hear from him. Let me see my luck whether it's with me. Hello, everyone. I'm Kyung Ko, the Shinsung High School English teacher in South Korea. Can you hear him talking? Yes. Um, hello? Yes. Can I? Okay, good. Yes. I applied the mapping activity for guiding students to tackle environmental awareness issues. The main purpose of launching this project is to enlighten students to think of a way to solve environmental problems and perform tasks to achieve SDGs. For achieving the project goals, I have collaborated with teachers and schools from five countries. With the help of different kinds of online collaborative tools, all the participants communicate synchronously and asynchronously without the limitation of time and space. So I established the three platforms for this project. The first one is Google Classroom. In Google Classroom, participants were able to share their action plans. The second one is a Padlet. In Padlet, Indian students and Korean students are more garbage mapping data in it. Students were able to share garbage issues from other countries. And the third one is Flickgrid. Using Flickgrid, students are able to share ideas 
perform video discussions. In this project, students share the greeting messages. The Korean students also participate in trash mapping and cleaning activities. If students find the garbage on a street, like the video, they take a picture of it and upload the data on MapLock K3, the mapping application. Around 100 students in Sinsung High School participated in this project. And some of the students picked up pressures to practice their action plans. And these are mapping data. The students recorded it. Students analyze the data and share information using online tools. The graph shows different types of trash data collected. After analyzing the data, students discussed and chose their presentation tools and the action plans. These are one of the presentation materials the student made. Students analyzed the whole garbage data collected and tried to find out solutions to reduce them. Other students analyzed the garbage data in school area and figured out problems. And these are campaign posters the students made. Based on the analyzed data, students set action plans on and off environmental campaign. And some students onward the short videos and web posters on SNS to promote environmental awareness, like this. Recently, Korean students and Malaysian students shared their project results online and had a chance to share ideas how to protect the environment and conserve the nature. And at the end of December, students are planning to join an online conference for sharing their experience with students from other foreign and domestic schools. Some students recorded their presentation videos and we're gonna exhibit them on the Metaverse so that all the students may visit and watch the video. The other students will give a presentation in a synchronous way so the students who are able to join the conference may watch and share feedback about their classwork in real time. This is all, thank you. All right, so that's for the whole showcase. So to wrap up my session, I would like to bring you back to the, our very original issues. Once the education transformation, we also leave a substantial gap in trying to link these two together. We would like the student to become a global citizen with strong Malaysian identity. And we have the language material in the form of CFR textbook, which is the globalized textbook, the imported textbook. In the, in, in the imported textbook, there are so much lacking in the cultural context, which can lead students to increase in the social awareness and to be uh, responsive to the, uh, the surrounding real life issues. So in order to link this gap, I have discovered or I have uh, found a way uh, in getting students to involve, which is through many, many jigsaw puzzles that teachers need to um, you know, constantly seek insight into, to enact highly contextualized education into real life setting. So it is very much like the jigsaw you see here. But, but the question is why the language class, why the English, te English teacher were to do this? Because research has have shown us and, and also convinced us that um, usually in the, in the language classroom, uh, students learn new ways of communication. And because of this, new understandings are found, new understanding of the world are discovered through a particular lens. I begin to understand this as I see that uh, with our, our newly aligned uh, syllables, we have the privilege to learn like a Westerner because the, the syllables enable us to think globally. But we, 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 do, we cannot miss out our root and what is relevant to us. So to do this, when the education transformation started in 2013, to 2025, we have enough time to fix this problem or to, or to link the gap. That is, discover a real life problem and cultivate uh, a culturally relevant material that students find purpose and meaning in doing. And at the same time, 
These materials are able to equip students with a 21st century learning skill and to bring them to wholesome development. At the same time, teacher researchers need to constantly find new ways, innovative ways in, uh, in, um, in reading uh, papers and articles so that we upgrade ourselves and we enlarge our paradigm. We need cooperation from the stakeholder, stakeholders and policy makers to give us support in doing this. In, in my case of uh, international collaboration, I'm thankful for the ELTC to grant permission, the English Language, Te Teach, English Language Teaching Center, to grant us permission in doing this project as part of the highly immersive program so that my students were given the permission to uh, collaborate in an international platform. And also, I received also support from my superior. And to not just that, the continuous uh, professional development for my colleague. They are very they are very supportive in doing so because as you know, for the past like one year, almost one year, I have not met these students, the Form 4 students. I just recruited them from any class. Those students who are interested, they will come along this site with me when their internet um, service and capacities allow them to do so. And, also, and then only finally, when the students bring up their case to a global platform, they will begin to appreciate their own culture. A global citizen, I believe, is born when the students clearly understand um, the root the culture and the language. Then I believe they will cultivate a very strong Malaysian identity. So that's my contribution to English language teaching, I believe. Now the bridge is built and we just need to walk them through the gaps. So I'm willing to join the team. So this is the track mark for my school. I keep, I take and cook and take, uh, I take and keep this picture because our school will be soon demolished next year to rebuilding of a new phase of the school premise. And this is the track mark, the bridge. So at the side, at the back of my school, this is also uh, from Mal Cran. I was the, 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 we are just in front of, of, the, of this place. Um, and this tree has been chopped down due to allowing the future project to take place. But this, be, this becomes a memory. So that's all I have in my showcase. Thank you very much. I pass the, back, I pass the time back to the facilitator. Have some audience on the audience now. Audience, doesn't okay. Um, do we have any questions from the floor? Any questions? Are there any questions from the floor? No questions from the floor. So, um. Any from online? Do we have any questions from our online audience? Uh, Jenny, do you have a question? I've got a question. Can I ask a question? <laughs> Please. Well, Madam Chop, thank you very much for the interesting um, idea in the workshop. It's really um, something new to me. It's creative and it's very interesting to hear. I'm just wondering, because um, you mentioned earlier on that this encourages the students to be uh, to be better at decision making. Can you maybe share with us a little bit about that? Like, um, I'm just wondering, like, how does how does the student from, you know, um, learning how to make decisions to after joining this program and then, you know, becoming better at decision making or maybe what kind of activities would involve them having to decide? <laughs> just just okay. tell. Yes. Okay. Mm. Let me think of one particular scenario. Okay. Because this project has like taken place ever since July. You know, it is quite it is quite a long process. But I can remember very clearly uh, what, from one of my student participants. Mm, I even even though we could not join the, all the clean up session. Um, 
no doubt, no doubt, we do need to make some decision in regards to uh, presenting what we found relevant and significant. For example, for example, in a forum, we our 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 opponent or our our team, our team is from the South Korea. However, in the in the beach clean up, we were told from the from the speaker that rubbish plastic bottles were found. Plastic bottles from South Korea were found here. Whose fault is that? Is it the the South Korea to tourists come and throw the rubbish here? Then finally, the the speaker clarified that this is not actually anybody's fault. This is like so. My student has a dilemma here. How to bring about this fact or how to bring about this recovery to South Korean friend? Will this idea be offensive or will, will this idea like cause like any um like you know any conflict? You no. Know? So I I see them like keep uh, no, texting me like, uh, Madam, how should we how how should we say this? So I coach them, I will like guide them, I say you, you just have to tell the fact. So they will have a lot a lot of uh, decision making to do or um, can we like can we like uh, bring it in a more polite way? So I see that um, fine, uh, at the end at the end of the discussion, they are quite responsible by not hiding facts um, but to bring up um, this matter. To, to the attention of our friend, the South Korea friend. I even clarified with the, the, with the uh, speaker, who is my friend from Coaching Beach Cleaner. I asked him, I said, Do you, did you all really, really find uh, the bottle, the plastic bottles from South Korea? I said, this is very important to us because um, we are dealing with this kind of situation. Uh, then he said, yes. So I see that. Um, it's quite a, like a crucial, like a crucial for me. But I see that this is quite a crucial things to handle. But I believe I expose the student to the real life issue, to the real life problem. Mm. Well, very well done, yeah. Thanks for that. Very, very interesting. It's very um. I think it's very rare. This is the first I've heard that a, a local school is doing that. So are you guys collaborating just with South Korean schools or do you collaborate also with other schools for Malaysia? Um, for this particular uh, what is it, project, we because it was initiated by the South Korea teacher, like I told, like I said, I met him uh, through Skype in the classroom last year. So this year he extended the, the collaboration we have actually six countries, but with South Korea being the major or the more more active uh, partnering partnering school. And one thing is like our time our time frame. I know our time defer is only one hour, so most of the time we could get in touch. Okay, mm. thank you. Very very interesting. Yeah, very eye opening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you, Madam Cho. Esther, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Yeah. Can you hear, Madam Chuck? Can you hear yeah, Esther? Yeah, I can hear her. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, just like uh, thank you for your presentation. I find it uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I can see that you have put a lot of efforts in that. Uh, it's a very big project, I guess, <laughs> since you said that it's in July and now it's going to be like December. And uh, for me, I have two questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is on the feasibility of this kind of lessons. Uh, do you recommend that uh, this kind of project for all level of proficiency, or is it only suitable for students with good proficiency? Because I look at the testimonial and I can see that the students can speak very well. So that's my uh, first concern. Okay. And then the second one, uh, in terms of the subject itself, so, uh, when we talk about ELP, and in school, uh, we also have other subjects like moral education <laughs> or values education. So, how do you negotiate that with your students? I mean, like, how do you put some, you know, <laughs> so that they don't think that it's just another uh, moral project that you want to make it more focused on English? Yeah, so that's my two questions. But all in all, I think it's very, very interesting. 
uh, and I can see that uh, I've, I've seen something not similar, but I think this one is something that that me up to my understanding. Yeah, so that's my um, So I think first uh, question is on proficiency, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can address to your first concern because this is the concern for my student as well about the feasibility. How how well or how proficient can our participant be? Uh, at first, I thought the worry is also unnecessary because our partnering uh, countries they are learning English as a foreign language. They even look forward to countries like us, the developing the developing country, to share their language with them. So, you, you, as you can see, the the testimony from my student, this student, she is one of the top students because she is just so uh, how do you say that available, and she followed me ever since uh, she was in form two to the debate, to the student debate workshop and all that. And she ha has been like constantly finding ways to upgrade herself. She is just an exceptional. I do have 20 like, student participants in my team here. Um, I, can, I, can, I can tell you that this language proficiency is a mixture. It uplifts the lower proficiency and, and, and reach the, the advanced learner. Because the advanced learner can always like find ways to show an example to the rest. The lower proficiency, they agreed to join my, my, my project. I think because they have nothing else to do, you know, throughout the home-based learning, you can, you, you know, not. Mm, um, and and this also answer your second question about time frame. Well, I do, I really do not know what our future education will take us to, as there are so much uncertainties. And I can't even promise my my student that I will see them next year March as a, as a school resume, you know. And with uh, with the uh, you know with the current situation of the COVID and the pandemic, so I really can't tell. What, what what we can be doing. In fact, I'm in the beginning, I have no idea what type of project that I'm into, the project like I, I share I share with you, because it, it, it keeps developing over the time and over the needs uh, and over the situation and needs. So then again, I can say that um, I did not do all this all by myself. I was just leveraging on the assisting source, like for example, uh, one thing is the coaching beach cleaner. They are just ever ready to give the sharing, and my student can watch the or can hear the recorded sharing at their own time if they if they miss the the live session. Mm. So I think I give them enough allowance in uh, completing every every task. Yeah, I encounter a lot of uh, challenges because I don't meet the form four students. They are not allowed to come to school. They can only stop at the at the at the at the, the pondok the the how is the guard house. To drop the item, to drop their the letters, to even come and pick up the letters. Mm. So I hope that answer your questions. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Chok. And that takes us to three p.m. exactly. So um, thank you very much. And despite all the uh, video and audio troubles, don't worry about that. Um, these things happen. So. Um, uh, we will please don't forget to join us at five o'clock for the closing ceremony and the awards presentation but you're feel free to stay on for our next presenter and i can see that our next presenters are here um if you can just give us a moment um we'll get back to you shortly mm -mm.
mind to keep your voices really down because just now it's very hard for me to hear what was going on. So I really appreciate if everybody could be quiet during the presentation. Okay. All right. Good afternoon and um, welcome to the next presenters. Um, sorry for the bit of the delay here. Um, we are now going to have a presentation by Ms. Kiran Deep Sandhu and Mr. Ashish Dhaka. And the title of their presentation is What Do the Greeks Say About Effective Business Communication? So uh, the presenters are going to first briefly introduce their original idea, summarize their contribution to knowledge, and then demonstrate their teaching methods in a 30-minute mock lesson or their demonstrate their idea in a 30-minute mock lesson. Um, if you do reach your 30 minutes of uh, your demonstration and you have not wrapped up, I will uh, call time and give you one minute to wrap up. Um, as mentioned earlier, the audience may ask questions during Q&A uh, after the demonstration. And at that time, panel of reviewers will also ask questions. So uh, Ms. Kiran and Ms. Mr. Asish, do you have any questions before we start? Yes, I just want to know. Hi, Christina. Hi. Hi, I'm just uh, just wanted to know. Am I audible? Yes. Very and clear. Is, is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. There will be yeah, a hi, brief. Uh, Ashish here. Am I audible? Just Ashish, a audio check. Slightly more. Can you bring it closer? The the. Can you speak again? Once again. Is it better? Uh yes, maybe. That's fine. It's good. Okay. Are we ready to start? Okay, let me get my timer ready. And um, yes, you can start whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, wise men speak. Well, wise men talk because they have something to say. And fools talk because they have to say something, as said by Pluto. Today, I, Kiran Deep Sandhu, along with my partner Ashish Daka from Leadership Card, are here to share with you what the Greeks have to say about effective communication. Because the objective of this uh, creative workshop is that by the end of it, we all want to speak like wise people versus fools. So to start this presentation, I said, as we are with the Greeks, let's bring in the Greek god, Hermes to share with us the uh, Greek god Hermes, the god of communication to share with us what is the outline of the presentation. We'll be looking at what is communication? What are the two different types of frameworks that we will be discussing? We'll also be doing a content analysis and followed by a teaching methodology that has been implemented. Ashish and I are running a company which is called Leadership Card, which shares with emerging leaders how to communicate more in the most effective manner. But as practitioners, we hope that by the end of this workshop, we'll be able to add new knowledge that can be impl implemented in the language classrooms as well as communication classrooms or any type of classrooms where students have to communicate their ideas both verbally as well as in the written format. The format is that the two frameworks which are from the Greek uh, scholars, how we can use them in our classrooms. The hope is that along with sharing the different frameworks, we are adding to the new uh, to the existing knowledge of what is communication and how students and practitioners can communicate in the most effective manner. So what is communication? Communication is the process of creating meaning through words and non-verbal behavior. Well, I thought that while we're talking about the Greeks, let's bring in Caesar here too. The Romans had a lot and here Caesar is having listening to his soldiers to something that they are plotting. How can they rob, continue robbing the Roman Empire? And the soldiers come and say, 
We have a great idea, Caesar. Instead of calling it taxes, we'll call them roaming charges. Caesar listens attentively. Silently, is he thinking? Is he frowning? Is he questioning what the soldiers have to say? Silence is a powerful tool of communication. On the other side, the soldiers, just by their body language, they're whispering as if it's a plot against the state of how they can continue robbing the state. So communication, as the Moravian bottle says, is only 7% through words, 55% through body language, and 38% through tonality. From the body language of Caesar, he doesn't even have to say anything. He is communicating an aura, an authoritative figure. He's able to not even, he doesn't even need to say anything, but a lot has been communicated. The body language of the soldiers show that they have something that is, that they're conniving about, they're thinking about, they're plotting against the state. Their tone probably is in the form of whispers. So here you can see that communication is only 7% through words, 55% through body language, and the remaining through our tonality. Similarly, when we take this example into the classroom, as practitioners, many times you will feel that many of your students connect with you. And some of us get those poor feedbacks in our appraisal saying, the teacher wasn't interesting. Is it because we were not able to communicate our thoughts, ideas in the most effective manner? It's because words only counted for 7%. How we communicated our thoughts, that body language made a difference. So taking with Caesar, I'm now going to pass the floor to my partner, Ashish Tata, who's going to share with you the communication strategy that Caesar used with his three wives. Thank you, Kiran. Communication strategy. Let's first discuss a lesson plan. When you plan lessons for your students, what do you exactly do? You plan the topics or the subjects that you're going to take in a given day. It can also include what are the key learnings that you'd like to communicate or make the students understand and learn, and also how you're going to go about giving that kind of imparting that training. That's nothing but planning or strategy. It's similar for communication. Before we communicate in whichever form, we must have a strategy in mind. Now, Caesar had three wives during the course of his life, and those three wives were very helpful in planning out his communication strategies. The three wives stand for the three W's of communication. What? Then why? And then who? What? What is that core message that we want to get across? Staying with the same example of the lesson plan. I'm sure when you're taking a class, you'd like some very key learnings to be imparted to the students. Now, communication is just not about communicating clearly what the key learnings. It is also important that the communication of the message gets and derives the right results. You get the right results. And in this case, the right results would be that the students clearly understand and they are in a position to implement those learnings. That's the end result. So communication is just not about the words. It is how the action goes behind it to get the results. Similar with why. Why do you want the students to understand clearly? What is the reason? Because you'd like them to do well in their academics. The end result. And I'm sure you'll appreciate that depending on the different levels or grades of the student, the communication would vary. It will not be the same. Similarly, when you're talking to your fellow teachers, I'm sure the communication style will not be the same as you talk to the students. So communication varies. 
who is the audience the audience determines the communication so what why and who is the communication strategy now with the communication strategy in hand caesar as the husband has to now execute the how of communication the one h of communication and as we discussed in the previous slide it is very important to achieve the desired results through the communication so the content is just not about words it's our expression our body posture our language and how it is communicated plays a very important role in passing on the message because ultimately we don't just want to pass the message we want to derive the results communication is a demonstration of the actions in words and that's why the expressions and tone play a very important role now communication is interaction between people it is important for you to understand what others are saying process that information and then respond appropriately correct and there comes in active listening listening is a very important part of communication as is silence listening is important you have to understand and then communicate back now the communication strategy today we are going to talk about two very important principles the mintos principle and the aristotle's principles of communication strategy so there's three wives and one husband which is the 3w and 1h is our communication framework the communication strategy now let us discuss about the mintos principle i'm still staying with the same example of the lesson plan when you are planning or imparting lessons in the class you would like the students to go back with some very key learnings that's the core message you want them to take that's the core message and as per the mintos principle the core message or the key learnings is nothing but the bottom line and minto recommends that we have bottom line on top which means we start with the core message and then de detail that out with supporting and facts today class this is what we are going to take this is what is the learning that i'd like to impart so there's this is the, what you want to achieve the core message comes at the top followed by the supporting that's the mintos principle bottom line on top let's now take a look at the aristotle's principles what did aristotle suggest aristotle suggested logos ethos and pathos as a part of the communication execution strategy what is logos ethos and pathos let us discuss logos it is the same as being very logical what does a logical mind do talk with facts with data with statistics that's logos now then how do you interpret that data what are the key learnings the analysis of that what do you want to come to or the person to understand or take away that is ethos you are establishing that with your expertise with your experience your credibility and any communication you would need the other person to be very interested to understand listen to the communication that's kind of arousing an emotion within people and that's pathos so in effect if you think about it logos is what do you want me to understand after you have communicated ethos how do you want to interpret those understandings and what are the key learnings that i will get from that pathos how do you want me to feel after you have communicated come back again to the lesson now you have the lesson plan you have a strategy now you're imparting the strategy i'm sure you would start with first making the students curious making them interested to learn is it not to learn more and that is what we call audience engagement and that that is achieved by pathos you can start with could be some interaction it could be storytelling it could be humor you have to evoke the right feelings stories could be real time stories sometimes failure stories success stories you get them into how we should know more about the subject that's pathos 
and then you establish those few points using logos. Let's say it's a history class. You'll go to the various events. I'm sure you'll be explaining that those events, what happened. And then using your ethos, your credibility, your experience, your analysis, you help them to analyze that information that they've got. And then that reinforces the key learning that you want them to take away. That's ethos. So in any, commun any communication, you will find a combination of the Mentos principle and the Aristotle's principle. Like the lesson plan, you will engage the student in pathos. You will have logos. And when you start your class, you have this is what I want to cover. That is the Mentos principle and help them understand more with your credibility, which is ethos. I'm sure you'll be working a lot with your students. They must be doing research papers. They'll be doing a lot of presentation. And I think this are the, the communication framework is something that you should encourage them also to use. Whenever you're doing a research paper, you start with the mint first the strategization. What is that I want to achieve? What you want that paper to convey and make people understand? You have done your strategy, then you start with the mentors principle, which is the student should start with what is their core finding and what is that? And then establish with facts. And then with their ethos, with their analysis, help people to understand from the paper to establish the core points. Similarly, when they are making a presentation, you should encourage them to first do an audience connect, which is pathos. They should first connect and then establish the presentation through logos, data, facts, figures, and then help them to interpret using ethos. So in any combination, we have, we have the communication framework, pathos, ethos, logos, and the middle pyramid coming into play. Normally, we start with pathos because you want the other person to become interested in your conversation, but you can use a combination depending on the various situations. At this point, let us look at a video. Let us look at a video and try to analyze how the communication framework has been used here. Kiran? So today, Ashish has, shares, has shared with you the two principles of the Mentos principle and the Aristotle principle that we can use in the classroom to help our students communicate their thoughts in the most clear, effective manner. We decided to use authentic material, which is in the form of a video. Previously, I've also used a comic strip and how authentic material, when it's brought into, uh, into the classroom, engages the students through visual content, gets them to analyze real content and how they can take those learnings and apply it into other scenarios. Today, the authentic content that we are going to be analyzing is a speech by JK Rowling's. And it's a short speech where I would like all the audience members over here to take a paper and pen and just analyze the speech along with us. We would like you to see how has the speaker used logic? How has a speaker used emotion to connect with the audience? How has the speaker used credibility to build upon the storytelling that she has to share with the audience. So can I get everybody to get a paper, paper and pen and make notes as we watch JK Rowling's deliver this commemoration speech at Howard. It's a short four and a half minute video. We'll watch it together and have an analysis using the LEP method framework. Ashish, I'm going to try and uh, just uh, share the screen again. I think there's no audio, Kiran, you may not have okay. shared the computer sound. Okay. Actually, 
I have racked my mind and heart for what I ought to say to you today. I have asked myself what I wish I had known at my own graduation and what important lessons I have learned in the 21 years that have expired between that day and this. I have come up with two answers. On this wonderful day when we are gathered together to celebrate your academic success, I have decided to talk to you about the benefits of failure. And as you stand on the threshold of what is sometimes called real life, I want to extol the crucial importance of imagination. These may seem quixotic or paradoxical choices, but bear with me. Looking back at the 21-year-old that I was at graduation is a slightly uncomfortable experience for the 42-year-old that she has become. Half my lifetime ago, I was striking an uneasy balance between the ambition I had for myself and what those closest of to me expected of me. I was convinced that the only thing I wanted to do ever was write novels. However, my parents, both of whom came from impoverished backgrounds and neither of whom had been to college, took the view that my overactive imagination was an amusing personal quirk that would never pay a mortgage or secure a pension. <laughs> I know the irony strikes with the force of a cartoon anvil now. But... <laughs> so they hoped that I would take a vocational degree. I wanted to study English literature. A compromise was reached that in retrospect satisfied nobody and I went up to study modern languages. Hardly had my parents' car rounded the corner at the end of the road than I ditched German and scuttled off down the classics corridor. I cannot remember telling my parents that I was studying classics. They might well have found out for the first time on graduation day. <coughs> of all the subjects on this planet, I think they would have been hard put to name one less useful than Greek mythology when it came to securing the keys to an executive bathroom. Now, I would like to make it clear in parenthesis that I do not blame my parents for their point of view. There is an expiry date on blaming your parents for steering you in the wrong direction. <laughs> So okay, I would like all our participants to share with us how, that how do you think that J.K. Rowling was able to connect with the audience? Do we have some people who would like to share their views? I'm not able to see the participants because I'm presenting. So Ashish, if you're able to see someone, can you ask? Christina, would you like to share with us that how did the uh, how did J.K. Rowling actually connect with the audience with emotion? Um, I think because she was able to put herself into their shoes and she told them that she was once where they were. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Coming back to bottom line up. That is the main point that she was talking about. Can someone share with us what was that key thing that she wanted to share with the audience? Would any of our participants like to share that? What was that one message that within this short span of three minutes, what is that one message that she was trying to get to? Anybody from the floor? Jenny? I'm not able to see the participants, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop presenting. Yes, I mean, do we have any of our participants who would like to share? OK, Christina, why don't you tell us? So what do you think was the logical uh, exp uh, logic that how she connected with the uh, with the audience? Well, I think there were a few ways. Um, she well, actually, it wasn't all logic that she connected. She she used humor as well. Absolutely. Uh, so she used humor. She used uh, storytelling. She was able to put herself in the uh, the shoes of the audience. Her credibility she shared at that point where she said that all her life, all she wanted to do was to write stories. 
that was the way that she was able to show that how for such a long time who she is is not just what had happened overnight it was a story which started way back when even her parents thought it was a quirky deal for her to even think of taking up uh, literature the logic in this was about her wanting to uh, establish herself as a as her as a speaker and in the in a later part she talks about fear and she was able to connect about fear back with the audience which is again an emotion but also the logical part about it that fear may be looked at failure may be looked at very glamorously by many people but it's not all that glamorous so we have used a video to analyze and use the ethos pathos and lo uh, logos model framework to uh, see how we can um, get the gist of it, analyze content. And from the same way, when we use these kind of content in our classrooms, we are able to get our students to think outside the box because it's authentic content, which they won't be able to get a straightforward answer to. So when we when we come to this, this is uh, using a video. I will now pass it back to Ashish, who will sum it up with you on what are the key learnings from this workshop. I think before that, Kiran, if you allow me, I would like to say that this is a perfect example of the communication framework being put to use. She Absolutely. first made her point with the Mentos principle. She put the benefits of failure and imagination. That's what she really wanted to talk about. And she made that clear at the beginning. And then this was a very unique combination. She used pathos, logos, and ethos together as she went to describing her life with fact. She added humor into that, got the emotions with her own stories, and then she established the point in terms of what she wanted to do. So she followed perfectly the communication strategy. And I'm very sure she would have planned the three whys before she started because she had to deal with the students at the commandment speech, what at the Harvard, how, what is that level or the kind of stories, the humor that will connect her to the audience. So there would have definitely been a strategization before she went on stage. So we I missed out that section Ashish, in the beginning where he, she had started that because of this uh, speech, she had already lost so much weight because the thought right. of presenting at Harvard had been a win win situation where she was so stressed out that she lost. So that part we had to crop it up because you wanted to just get a shot yeah, bit of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Continue, true, very true. You're right. Yeah, thank you. So with that, we come to the end of our uh, session. I would like to summarize what did we cover in this workshop, the workshop outcomes. First, we discuss what is communication. Communication is just not mere words being clearly communicated. It is persuading people to get to the actions, get the results. Communication is important in terms of getting the end results and persuasion. Second, we talked about the communication framework. We talked of different frameworks. We started with the with the, the three whys, the one has been. Then we talked about the Meharibians framework of communication, where we had 7% of uh, words, 55 of body language and tonality. Then we talked about the three wives and one husband communication framework, how the communication is to be executed using the Mentos and the Aristotle framework. Then we took a real time video for analysis, how that communication framework was in fact implemented. And for that, we used the real time video for that analysis. And there were different methodologies that we used as a part of our teaching. We had a theme. What did the Greeks say about communication? And we ran the theme all through. We used comic strips, we used images. We use different frameworks, the Meharian model, the communication framework, and then about Aristotle's and Mintos. That's how we try to connect with the audience and get our message through. So this is what was our objective in the outcome of this workshop. Thank you so much for your time. And I think now we are open for questions. Thank you very much. And we are open for questions. Thank you very much, presenters. Um, yes, we're open to question and answer right now. Um, oh, I see Jenny has turned on a camera, so she's ready for a question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
Hi, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, I'm just wondering if I were to ask you, um, if, if I were to ask what is that one social impact or what is that one commercialization point of your product, what would your answer be? Jenny, we did not take it from the commercialization point of view. It was a mock lesson of uh, how to communicate, how we can implement it for the practitioners in the classroom. So uh, in terms of how it can be impl implemented in the classroom, it would be something that we want them to be better, more effective communicators. And in order to be effective communicators, if they are able to use the LEP method and use the, uh, uh, the block method of presenting, then definitely your, your ideas are clearly structured. And when you are able to clearly structure your content, you can speak in a very effective manner. So this is what it was hoped that as teachers, as lecturers, we want to be also connecting with our students. We want to be able to uh, engage our students because one of the markers, as all of us know, is student engagement. Our ratings, our appraisals are dependent on student engagements. Many of us don't get that. It's because we don't we are not able to get capture their attention for that 14 week semester that we have them. Why? Because the content may be the same that all of us are teaching, but have we been able to effectively communicate that content to our students and keep them hooked from week one until week 13. So this is what it was hoped that when we are when they when we use something like this, like a framework, which is the LEP framework in designing our PowerPoints, in designing our content, we may be given syllabuses from other places, but how we as practitioners use the same content and present it to our students is what marks one person from the other. And so that's what I meant when I say it's not from a commercial point of view, it's from actionable implementation of the lessons that we wanted to share with all of you. And if I may allow to add here, Kiran, I would like to add here, let's leave the commercialization part. Okay, that was not the objective. But if we look at the whole aspect of what you want to impart is the engagement point. We let them interested and curious to know more. Coming to the subject about communication, if I had to talk about it, the point that I think stands out as we talk here today is that communication is just not mere words being well spoken in whichever language. It is to get to the real results. That's why we want in persuasion, the LEP principle, the credibility of the person. And you don't establish your credibility when you because people listen to you when you're credible. Doesn't come when the day you speak. It is the actions that go behind it. So communication is more about the actions more than the words. I think that was also a standout point that we wanted to emphasize here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny, for the question. Yeah. Would you any other questions from the floor? Any other questions? That's this, this one question. Um, hi, Kieran and Ashley. Um, this one question. Hey. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Can I know who? I can, I just Christina Esther. can't see. It's Esther. Esther. Hi, Esther. Yes, Esther. Yes. Uh, uh, this one question because uh, I looked at uh, what you both uh, presented. You mentioned about body language. Okay. And then right now we are in pandemic. <laughs> just need to advise here. How do we want to make it, you know, uh, they only like see the <laughs> top of our body. So uh, do you think this will be feasible for uh, online learning as well? Or is it more suitable for uh, the of frosting? Excellent question. Uh, excellent question, Esther. For the last one year plus, I have been teaching online. Uh, all my leadership programs along with Ashish are being conducted online. So this method of communicating does not matter whether it's done in person or on or in the virtual world. The question is how effectively we communicate and communication if we use the logos pathos ethos model you are able to communicate and structure your content that it doesn't matter whether you are virtually presenting or physically presenting taking this conversation slightly off topic i recently presented uh, did a i gave my tedx talk 
which was on uh, done by University Malaysia Sabah, and it was done virtually. Although I would have loved to do it in person, structuring my entire speech was done using the logos ethos pathos model i connected with the audience with emotion and then backed it up with building my credibility as a speaker and then taking them with the uh, logic and the exp uh, and the explanations so it doesn't matter whether we as practitioners we have students or we go in as speakers we have to be using something that we can connect with our audience and that is the reason why we always say using the lep method of um, sharing whether virtually or in person is one of the most effective manners of communicating ashish would you like to add on to this yeah i would say that the framework doesn't change whether it's online or offline the way you implement the framework could change for example let's talk about body language or the postures now when you're in a virtual environment it's different it's not how you're covering the stage as we say when you are presenting it maybe you to bring in more emotions into your feelings or expressions how you bring that to pass across it's in fact more challenging but then we have to come to terms with the fact that it's going to be a hybrid model more of online so yeah, I think the expressions and emotions are the same. The concepts remain the same. How you implement with change in the virtual world, of course. But I don't think there's any difference in the framework. The LEP framework is the same wherever. Ultimately, we have the job of persuading people to act, is it not? We have to get that done. So it's the same. It's the mechanism and how you do it, your own action plans will have to tune to virtual. That would be my two cents on that. And I will also add on that again, it doesn't matter whether we are presenting uh, virtually or in person. We always have to think from the audience's perspective, what are they going to take away? Because it's not about how much you know, it's how much they want to know from you. So it's always starting with the who, what and why and how is just the implementation which we have shared. But we have to start with the audience in mind because they are who are going to be listening to that message. They are the ones who are going to take away those messages and implement actions. So it's always using the three W's and the one H, which is the husband, and then building it up using the blot method and the Aristotle's principle to build your credibility as a speaker with clear, effective content so that you can deliver in the most effective manner. An example is the activities that we have to do. It is a must to have audience engagement. Now the kind of activity different. Today we did a video analysis. In the in the offline mode, perhaps we'll have to think of different activities, but there has to be an activity and interaction. It's only the matter of the way we implement differs. The concept doesn't change. Yeah. I, I've just got a question. Out yes, of curiosity, <laughs> why Greek? Why not American? Why not? Exactly. Greek? Actually, that's an excellent question that you asked. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very valid question, Jenny. You have asked about the Greeks. Okay. When, when we looked at the two principles that we were going to be talking about, it was going to be the Aristotle's principle, and that's where the whole Greek concept came about into. So right. starting with the, the Aristotle and then the Mintos, both of them were Greek principles. So then we took it backwards. The, where did English come from? It's from Latin. So we had we pushed it all the way back to the Greek gods and then framed this entire conversation to. So it's not about. So whenever we are designing content, if we are talking about Microsoft, then we bring in examples from Microsoft to substantiate our uh, our lesson plans. Today we were just looking at the frameworks. So when I thought about frameworks, the third framework was about Aristotle. And that's when I started with the Greeks, what they have to say. And when we took it backward, there was a lot that even the god of communication is Greek. So it, it went all the way back to researching to what all had the Greeks done to help us communicate in the most effective manner. <laughs> That's a very good question because, in fact, one of my business partners asked me the same thing. It's like, why are we talking about the Greeks? It should have been American or English or something like that. Absolutely. Brilliant question. It's really interesting how it's um, English, but then um, 
it's about Greek. I was wondering, that's the first question that came to mind. Why Greek? <laughs> but, so now we have taken you back to the origin. Basically, we have rewinded it all the way to the back, to the ruins, and then brought it forward from there. I see, right, right. And if you saw that my starting was also the same, that wise people talk when they have to, uh, when they have something to say, uh, wise people talk because they have something to say and okay. fools because they have to say something. So I we, love that, book. <laughs> that is from Pl uh, yeah, Plato. So when he started, when we start with that, even our quotes of communication go all the way back. Do you reckon Greek has got better communication than anybody else? <laughs> well, they, I'm not sure to say that the Greeks have better communication than anybody else. And many of the Greeks can't even speak correct English, if I can say that. But I just want to say that it was uh, the core reason for it was because of the framework. And that's how we built that entire lesson plan. Communication is not country specific. It is for all. That's my... But just just one last question on that. I'm just curious from your experience because you're talking about communication and and, and all that. Um, uh, while you're basing it on Greek, but your example was J.K. Rowling, which is British. So I'm, I'm <laughs> sure you understood why was J.K. Rowling's taken because I knew this meeting was being chaired by Christine, Dr. Christina <laughs> Yin, and hence I had five different <laughs> videos to choose from. But knowing that when I knew my audience, so it's started with the audience first. When you know your audience, you are able to curate your content based on that. So even though it started with the Greeks, I knew my content was created to an audience where my chair was going to is someone who loves J.K. Rowling. So what better than to start from there? <laughs> Um, but anyways, my question was, um, so from your experience with the workshop and dealing with communication, do you think culture and also maybe race and background, do you think they contribute to communication at all? Or do you think it's something separate, uh, you know, totally different? I Sorry, Jenny, I didn't get your question. Could you repeat that again? I'm just wondering because because we're talking about Greek and we're talking about British. So from your experience dealing with um, uh, communication, do you think a person's background, uh, be it you know race or, or culture or whatever, do you think it contributes uh, as a factor to effectiveness in communication at all? Or do you think it's completely separate? So uh, Jenny, we are from Malaysia, so we, we speak Manglish, we have Singlish, we have Hindi, Linglish, whatever it's called. So obviously the influence of where we are from, people from Malaysia, we when we speak like our can, 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 probably from other countries, nobody would understand, but we understand each other. So we are effectively communicating with it. If you say, uh, Jenny, can we go, uh, go out for Makan? See, I code switched, right? You understood me because that is effective communication between you and me. Can go makan. So that was enough for us to. So the communication is when what you say is understood by the other person. It's not about the beautiful English or Latin sentences that people write or speak. Is when what has been said has been what the recipient has said has been perceived in the same manner by the uh, the the, uh, the what the sender has said has been taken by the recipient in the same manner so that's what i meant by effective communication i think organization culture is important in all aspects Absolutely. it is an integral part even let's take of communication as i said communication is just not what you words which is understand it's you want them to get the results it's all about persuasion getting the results now an organization culture the culture plays a key role how you implement that lep it doesn't come each person is unique and different as except that you have to bring them to the same platform work together and that's where the organization culture plays such an important role in all aspects why only communication if the communication principles are something that you want it cannot be individualistic 
the organization has to promote that culture. Let's follow LEP. I think that's where you have a lot of conflict management and all stuff, leadership or team management. Everything depends on the culture that you work on. It is just not mere communication. Culture of communication is the words so that you understand, as Kiran was saying. I'm going to say a step further to say it is just not about that to process to get the right results. So it is much more than that, not the social, the whole ethos of organizations. So it's a broad aspect, and I think it is critical in every point in our life, the culture and the environment. That would Thank be my you very point. Much. Thank you. Hopefully you agree with that. Yeah, well said. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Yes, Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Any other questions from anybody in on the floor? No. Anybody online want some questions? Have any questions? Okay, with that then, um, thank you very much to the team of Kiran and Aki. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please do remember to join us at the closing ceremony, which is going to start at five o'clock later on. I believe you have links to that. Do you have the link for that? Yes, it's in the embedded thing. Let right. me just say thank you to Chris. Uh, I'll address you, Dr. Christina, Jenny, and the team at Swinburne for giving us this opportunity to share with all of you what the Greeks had to say about effective communication. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for my side as well. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Right, thank you, everybody.